Thank you for joining me today. I'm in the book of Romans, chapter 8, of course, uh, for many people. Chapter 8 of Romans is one of the high places of Scripture, and indeed, the very first verse there is one that we often quote and is, uh, is, is something that, that very much gives grace and joy and peace to the hearts of people who are believers. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We often stop there because that's a wonderful soundbite that speaks about who Jesus is and what he has done and the effect of his uh, life in us upon our lives. But I want us and I encourage us to go forward in that particular passage. Notice what he continues to say. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. Here's the phrase that is very important. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do. What was the purpose of the law? Uh, we're going to get to that in a moment. Uh, by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemns sin in, in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to this flesh, but according to the spirit. So what, what Paul is trying to say there is that when Moses was given the law and he gave it in turn to the people of Israel and Israel followed the law and they, they revered the law even as they do to this day, uh, when that was given, the purpose of that, there was a requirement that that, requir that, that had. Now Jesus mentions that and he puts in, uh, in a very succinct way what that particular requirement was. At the end of Matthew chapter 5 in the Sermon on the Mount, he says, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. <coughs> Excuse me. So, so what he's saying is that if you're going to measure your eternal hope based upon your righteous deeds, then you have to be perfect, just as the Father is perfect. Of course, no one can do that. And so what the law was not able to accomplish, that is human perfection and human righteousness, God did. He did it by condemning Christ and putting on him all of the requirements of that law and sacrificing him so that he could impute his righteousness to us. That's what Paul's trying to say here. Now, it's, it's absolutely true and we rejoice in that, that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. But it goes further than that. It goes deeper than that. And it, and it goes to the place of not only are we forgiven of our sins, but we are restored to that righteousness on the basis of the death of Christ. That's what Paul is trying to say here, that we have fulfilled in Christ the righteous requirements of the law. Now that's not something that we can boast about. That's only our, our boast is in, in Christ himself. Uh, what, is it, what does it say in the book of uh, Galatians that uh, God forbid that I would boast in anything but the cross of Christ? Or as Jeremiah says, let him who boasts both boast in this, that he knows and understands me, says the Lord. And so we are people who are given that righteousness and therefore we have no condemnation solely on the basis of what Jesus has done for us. And that's part of the reason why this particular passage is such a, a high point in the book of Romans and why many people find great comfort there. And I urge you to, if, if you're depressed, if you are struggling, if you feel oppressed by sin, come back and camp out and mem commit this to memory and, and bring to your consciousness every day the reality that you are not condemned in Christ, but that uh, through Christ you have been given the righteousness of Christ that the righteous requirement of the law has been fulfilled in you 
because of what Jesus did on the cross. He didn't, it isn't something that we have done. What the law and what men could not do, God did. And that's what Paul is saying here, and in that we rejoice. Father, I thank you for the fulfillment of the law in us. We understand that we are sinners and that it's not on the basis of our works, but it's only on the basis of our faith in Jesus. But we praise you that because we have faith in Jesus, there is no condemnation upon us. We praise you that the law has been fulfilled and that we will know that eternity with you because we stand in Christ's righteousness. Lord, let this idea, let this truth sink deep into the hearts of each person who hears, and may you be glorified and honored through it. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great day.